Stanford rally behind Heisman Trophy quarterback Jim Plunkett. A football player on two Rose Bowl winning teams at Stanford. An avid outdoorsman. Well, plus. And yes, an Elvis impersonator. These are some of the faces of Phil Satry. Phil is the same kind of guy today that he was then. He's honest, he's easy, he's dedicated, he's loyal, he's a, the kind of man that you want to know, that you want to work with, that you can trust. Uh, he, he's the exact same person today as he was then, only a little grayer. <laughs> Harris executive Jan Jones has known Satry since their college days at Stanford. I've worked with a lot of CEOs over the course of my uh, career. And, and I would say that Phil Satry is in the top three that I most respect, that I most admire, who has taught me management skills and ways to conduct business that, you know, I. I really believe have helped me be a better business leader. He's truly remarkable. He's just uh, an unbelievable man, an unbelievable businessman, an unbelievable person, father, husband, and friend. When Phil oh, Satry first joined Harris in 1980, the company had two Nevada casinos. Under his leadership, it expanded and has now become the largest gaming company in the world. Also under his tenure, Harris became the leader in responsible gaming, uh, and Satry became one of the founders of the National me. Center for customers. Responsible Gaming. It captures my career at Harris in many ways because uh, it begins with uh, the two casinos that we had when I joined the company, Harris Reno and Harris Lake Tahoe, and then all the other chips represent all the chips of casinos that we developed between that time and the time that I retired, and uh, I'm very proud of that. I've worked with a lot of colleagues to make that possible, and one of the other things I like about it, that uh, our job as, as uh, CEOs of public companies is to create value for the shareholders, and uh, my colleagues said, uh, congratulations on creating 24 years of shareholder value, in which a $10,000 investment by the time that I retired was worth $1.1 million. Phil Satry may be retired, but he stays busy. Michael Yakira of Envy Energy. He certainly loves the state, and you can see it through his philanthropy. You can see it through the uh, boards that he serves on. I don't think that there is another person in the United States who is the non-executive chair of two public companies at the same time. Phil Satry is, I think, the only one in the United States. He's the non-executive chair of NV Energy, the non-executive chair of IGT. I don't think there's another one. He was recognized uh, about a year and a half ago uh, by um, a group that uh, celebrates the successes of directors throughout the United States. He was one of six people who was recognized as a director of the year. Satry also makes time for his love of fishing. When I retired from Harris, the first year of retirement was spent almost uh, constantly going someplace fly, fly fishing. Now, I tired of that. I couldn't fish that much, so, uh, but I still enjoy that. And uh, Jennifer and I love to ski. Uh, we use Lake Tahoe a lot. The natural assets here of northern Nevada have been very important to us. But uh, my favorite sport is fly fishing, and I've been fortunate to do it all over the world. Also a favorite, the National World War II Museum. My father served in the service in World War II. He landed at Normandy and uh, uh, fought uh, in, in, in Western Europe in the Battle of the Bulge. And um, most of us in our family didn't know much about my dad's service, and he actually died before most of the movies that, and books started coming out, and so I, I read a book, uh, and I saw the movie Saving Private Ryan. I read the book D-Day, and, and then Citizen Soldier by Stephen Ambrose. And this is a museum he founded uh, in New Orleans, and it tells the story of the American experience in World War II. Satry joined the board of directors in 2002 and is finishing up his term as chairman of the board. I actually was able through research at the World War II Museum to 
to follow my father's unit, the 997th Field Artillery, all the way from their formation in the United States to uh, uh, their, uh, when they disbanded the unit after uh, victory in Japan and, and then returned home. And I'm always grateful because, you know, if he hadn't come home, I wouldn't have been here. Others are grateful, too. Marilyn Spiegel worked for Satry at Harrah's. Those are truly some of the best years I ever had at Harrah's because I had the chance to work with Phil. Phil's a visionary. Phil was the uh, gaming executive who believed in riverboat gaming and took the company to Joliet, Illinois, and took the company to Vicksburg, Mississippi, and to Shreveport, Louisiana, where I actually had the chance to uh, be the general manager and so had additional opportunities to be with Phil in different kinds of meetings. And no matter what the topic was, um, because Phil didn't know everything about the topic, he made sure that he brought out your best. And so to this day, Phil has left Harris in an operating role since uh, the end of 2003. But um, to this day, his legacy lives at Harris Entertainment and the people who had the opportunity to work with him um, truly learned more about themselves and he helped them be better people. A sentiment repeated by Jan Jones. He's successful because of the kind of person he is. He's successful because people are drawn to him and want to give him more and more authority because he not only uses it well, but he inspires people. And he inspires people to not only be their best, but to have a vision, to build something important. And, and I think that's why Phil Satry is so successful. And that's what Phil Satry believes his legacy will be. I think probably most important to me is that uh, what I felt about my experience at Harrods in particular is that I believed in people. And I believed in uh, developing people and raising their level of performance and making them, I think, um, more vital and uh, more important to their families and, and to um, themselves. And uh, I enjoyed that part of, about my job at Harris, and, and I enjoy it now in what I do both on the not-for-profit side and the for-profit side. So the people side has always been the most interesting part to me. I love buildings and I like to build buildings and We've been doing that at the National World War II Museum and in the other companies that I'm involved with, but um, when you get to the heart of it, it's the people. Mm -hmm.